game mode, player controller, pawn, and probably some other stuff. It's time to set up this project. So this is our project. It's completely empty for now. If I go here in the bottom left corner, I can expand this view here that shows me all the content and everything. And we can see that there's nothing, like it's completely empty. And actually I'm going to keep it open because I don't know why it will be collapsed. Like it's more useful to have this open anyway. So we're just gonna have it there. And we're going to create our first asset, which is the level. So the level we are in right now, we're just gonna save it. But uh, if you don't have that level open, we can open it via a file at the top left corner then new level, and then you can select your level. Actually, I'm going to select the first one, but you can select any other one if you want. So it should open that level for me. And once that level is open, I can do a control S to save the level. So I'm going to save it in a, a new folder that I'm going to call maps. And inside it, the level name here, uh, I'm going to name it L for levels. Then I'm gonna name it entry because it's going to be the entry level of our game and of our project. Then I click save. I can now see in the folders here that I have my new level. So as I said, I want to open this level when Unreal starts, and I also want it to open when the game starts. So once we're done with our project, we can package the game, and when the player opens the launcher on his computer, the first level he's going to end up in is that level, and then we can show a menu or do anything to lead the player to another level. So to tell Unreal to use that level as entry point, we're going to go in the project settings, which are in edit, at the top left corner, then project settings. Then I'm going to maximize this window. And the category we're looking for is maps and modes. I'm just gonna click on it. And here we can see two levels. They are the two default levels that are used by Unreal. The first one is the editor startup map, which is going to open when the editor starts. And the second one is game default map which is the map that is going to open once we launch the game. In our case, we want both maps to be the same. So I'm just going to go in the drop-down menu, select my level, so L entry, and do the same thing for the second one. Once we're done, we can go back to the main tab. Before we go and create our own camera controls, there's a few things that are important to know when we're using Unreal. And to explain them to you, I'm going to press play. So here we are in the default level, and if we click in the viewport, we see that we can move. So we can move around, go up, down. Uh, if I move my mouse, it moves the camera and everything. These controls are not coming from nowhere. They are given to us by Unreal when we are in the default level. But where do they come from? So I'm just going to stop with escape right now so I can uh, get my cursor back and I'm going to play again. Here on the right, we have the list of all the actors that are in the game at the moment. Uh, it's pretty much the same list that, let's say if I press stop here, we have the list of all the actors that are in our level right now. But when I press play, we see that the list is a bit different. It contains all the default actors that we have in the level, but there are also a bunch of yellow actors, which means that they were spawned at runtime after we press play. And in them, we can find the camera, the default pawn, and the player controller which are all responsible of the camera movement that we see when we play the game right now. But where do they come from? So I'm just going to press stop and play again. Well, they all come from the game mode base, which is the game mode that Unreal uses by default. So we see here in the list, we see that there's the player controller and the pawn. So by default, Unreal spawns the game mode base, which spawns the default player controller and the default pawn. Okay, but where is this defined? So if I press stop here, I can go back in the project setting. Here, we were in the category maps and modes. So it contains the maps and the modes, which is the game mode. So if we look at the game mode category, there's the game mode base right here, which is the value for the default game mode, which explains why we are able to play the game and move around without having to add any code ourselves. But what if we want to add our own code? Well, we have to override the game mode base to tell Unreal, okay, this is the game mode that we're gonna use, which is ours. And then in that game mode, we are going to tell Unreal, okay, for the pawn, let's spawn our pawn. And for the player controller, let's do the same thing. Let's spawn our player controller. And this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to go back in the main tab. And it's finally time to create our first blueprints. So we're going back to content. I'm going to right click on the folder, create a new folder that I'm going to call Blueprints. In that folder, I'm going to create another folder, which I'm going to name Core. 
The idea is that the core folder is going to contain all the code contributing to the main mechanics of our game. So the camera, the grid, the turn-based system, the units, the spells, everything that is core to the main gameplay. So in the core folder, I'm going to create another folder that I'm going to call player. And this is where we're going to create our blueprints. So I'm going to right click and click on blueprint class. In here, Unreal asks us which kind of class we want to create. So we're going to create a few of them. And the first one is the game mode base. So we're going to create our own game mode to tell Unreal to use our stuff and not his stuff. So let's click on game mode base. I'm going to call it BP underscore GM to keep it short. And then I'm going to select it and control S to save it. Once that's done, we finally have our own game mode. So we can tell Unreal to use it and stop using his own default game mode. So I'm going to go in the project settings here and we're going to replace the game mode base. So click on game mode base, select BP GM. Then go back to the main tab. So that's nice, we have our own game mode. But now we need to use that game mode to tell Unreal to use our own player controller and pawn, which we don't have right now. So let's create them, right click, Blueprint class. In the list here, we see player controller. So let's create it, player controller. I'm going to name it BP underscore PC to keep it short. Control S to save it. And finally the pawn, so right click, blueprint class again, and I'm going to select the pawn. So I'm going to name it BP underscore pawn, which is short enough. Control S to save it. It's now time to tell our game mode to use our pawn and our player controller. So we're going to open it. So double click on the game mode. If it is the view you're seeing, just click on open full blueprint editor here, which is going to open the real blueprint editor. And then we can maximize the window. Here we're going to go in class default at the top here. And on the right side, we can see the player controller and the pawn that are used by Unreal when we use that specific game mode. In our case, we want to replace them. So we are going to select the player controller, replace it with our new VP underscore PC. And we're going to select the default pawn class and replace it with our own VP pawn. And that's it. We can compile and save this blueprint. And then we can go back to the main tab. So let's try this. If I press play now. On the right side, I can see my BPGM my BP pawn and my BP PC. But what if I try to move around? So I'm going to click on the viewport and try to move. So WSD and the mouse. Nothing happens, nothing works. And this is because neither our pawn or player controllers contain any code that tells Unreal what to do when we press our keys on our keyboard or when we're moving our mouse. So we are really starting from nothing, which is what we want. So let's press stop. The last thing I want to do before ending this video is to show the cursor in game. Because we're gonna need it for our game, but also because it's super annoying that it's hidden every time we press play. So we're going to go in BP PC. In here I can go in the event graph. And we can see that we have two events here. I'm going to delete the tick because we don't need it. And we're going to use the begin play. If you deleted your begin play by mistake, you can always right click and search for begin play, which is going to let you create it again. So click on begin play and it's back. But what is the begin play? In short, it's an event that is called when this actor spawns in the world. It's pretty much the first thing that the actor is going to do while it becomes active. So let's say the game mode spawns. The first thing the game mode does is spawning the player controller. So the player controller spawns. And once the player controller is spawned and active in game, this event will be called and it will execute any code that is attached to it. So we're going to use it to tell Unreal that we want to see our mouse cursor in game. So to do that, we're going to right click and type mouse cursor. Here we can see all the functions, event, callback, and everything that is related to the mouse cursor that we have access while we are in the player controller. And the one we're looking for is the last one, set show mouse cursor with the red line on the left. So click on this. It creates a node that is a set for the variable show mouse cursor. Perfect, that's what we want. We're going to attach it to the begin play. 
Here, the default value is false because this checkbox is unchecked. So we're going to check it because we want the show mouse cursor to be true. And then we can go test it. So I'm going to compile and save. Then go back to the main tab and press play. If I click on the viewport now, I still have my mouse cursor, yay! So I can click on stuff around, click back on the viewport, do actions in game, which we can't right now because we don't have any actions to do. And then we can simply go back at the top and press stop if we want to, instead of pressing escape on the keyboard. And we have everything we need set up to be able to create our own camera control in the next video. But for now, let's go in Source 3 to submit our changes, to make sure we don't lose anything until then. So in Source 3, I have my default engine that contains the changes to the levels in the game mode, my new game mode, new pawn, player controller, and the level. So I'm going to stage all that, write my comment, so set up game mode, player controller, map, and pawn, and click on commit to end this video. So bye bye.